Hello, Fight fans, and welcome to Fight News Now Extra. It's John Pollock here with you, with John Ramdeen and Robin Black coming up in just a couple of minutes. Today, it's all Fight Night 28 chat as we run down the action from Brazil on Wednesday night. The main event of Wednesday's card from Belo Horizonte, Brazil, saw Glover Teixeira extend his win streak to 20 fights as he was able to avoid a tough Ryan Bader who stunned Teixeira, but he responded with a right followed by a left hook that put Bader down and finished him at 255 of the first round. It was announced at the post-fight press conference that Teixeira would get the next light heavyweight title shot. The co-feature saw middleweights Ronaldo Jacare Souza and Yushin Okami collide, with Jacare looking like a monster, pinning Okami against a cage with a flurry of shots and later dropping Okami with a right hand and getting the TKO stoppage at 247 of the opening round. And the main card also featured Joseph Benavidez continuing the team alpha male streak as he made quick work of Juicier de Silva, landing a left hand and a knee to the body that put de Silva down as Benavidez finished with another eight shots on the ground for the stoppage at 3.07 of the first round. We are joined by John Ramdeen and Robin Black coming off of Fight Night 28 on Wednesday evening. I thought this was almost a tale of two cards. If you just tuned in for the main card, what a great night of fights. If you decided to start at Facebook, Jesus, I those undercard <laughs> fights, my God, was the good very, very minuscule to the bad. Yeah, it, it was very, very strange. Serious disparity between the prelims and the main card. Uh, we talked about it. You're seeing the highest quality of mixed martial arts on the main card <laughs> with Jacare and Teixeira and Joseph Benavidez. And we saw guys on the undercard that just looked extremely tired. Their skills were very sloppy. And I don't think fans got to see the best mixed martial arts in the world, which is very strange considering the UFC is supposed to be the NFL or the NFL. NHL of mixed martial arts. You know, when uh, when there's a great rock band that's just starting to succeed and they travel, you're going to tour America. Every time you stop in a new town, you got to get a local opener. They're not going to be very good, but they're going to bring out hundreds of fans. It's kind of what's going on in the UFC these days. You bring the main card and that thing is killer. You got to fill it with a bunch of local guys. Get a bunch of guys from the region to kind of fight. Yeah, the, it makes our job easy, man. We just got to talk about the main card now, which was awesome. You don't want to talk about Yao Zeferino? <laughs> Or Ivan George? Yeah. No? Well, let's move on to the main card then. Uh, first of all, uh, the top three fights all, I think, were kind of the finishes many people anticipated, but as well kind of overshadowed on this main card, uh, Rafael Natal and uh, Thor Trong. I thought these guys, uh, they got fight of the night. Excellent, I thought. Yeah, some great transitions, lots of scrambles. Of course, it was exactly what grappling fans yeah. and uh, I think most casual fans can handle the jiu-jitsu game as long as they get to see yeah. that type of stuff. When somebody's playing, you know, half guard and they're staying on top and they're not trying to improve their position, people get ticked off. But when you see sweeps yeah. and submission attempts and people getting exhausted, I think people can handle that. Yeah, it was sweep mania, you know. And you know what I find really interesting now is you take guys that come to uh, throw a throw for example, they come from regions that are not sort of definitively hotbeds of MMA. To get to this level, you don't necessarily have the best training, the best training partners, the best coaches, at least not on the elite level that in Brazil you might have or in America you might have. So you got to have guts and heart and drive and trong, man. That guy hung in that thing all night long. Just super admirable to be able to get to that level coming from smaller markets and a really fun fight. Yeah, I, I thought up this stock even in defeat on that. Uh, let's go uh, into first the flyweights. Joseph Benavidez defeating uh, Juicy Formiga. Uh, but Benavidez, he's not, you know, planting that flag and saying, I want my rematch with Demetrius Johnson. He's kind of just, you know, well, if it's offered to me, I'll, I'll take the fight, but I'm not going to call anyone out. It's like, is there anyone more logical to fight Demetrius Johnson right now than Joseph Benavidez? No, but Benavidez knows that. I mean, the proof is in the pudding. Joseph Benavidez is the best 125 pound fighter in the world not named Demetrius Johnson. The guy is an absolute yeah. beast. We see his improvements uh, every time he steps into the cage. And I think that's the most important thing is that the guy is just an animal and the UFC knows that and eventually he's gonna get his title shot. Isn't, isn't some of that on the shoulders though of a Joseph Benavidez that you know, the flyweights right now, you've gotta give people that extra incentive to wanna see a fight. Yeah. And I wanna see Joseph Benavidez say, yes, I think I can beat him in a second fight yeah. and make me wanna see this fight. I think to some degree that's happening so much that maybe some 
some guys are thinking by being not that, you stand out maybe? I don't know, it's weird. You become Can, a wallflower yeah. then. Yeah, You're but talking it, about a roster of 450 guys. Give me a reason to want to see you uh, out next And time. I'll tell you the reason. A first round stoppage over a top yeah. ranked guy is one of the best ways that you're going to get your shot at the UFC championship. And that's what we saw from Joseph Benavides. He absolutely blasted Formiga. You know, he kind of looks. Formiga was the number one guy in the pre UFC era. Exactly. Yeah. So, I mean, this is the way Joseph Benavides is going to get his title shot. Take down Formiga, take down Tim Elliott, take whoever the next 125 pound fighter. You put G Chico Camus at 125 yeah. pounds, and Joseph Benavides takes him out chances are he's going to be fighting for a UFC title. Yeah, to give you a perspective of how small these guys are, Ramdeen and I were on a streetcar, and there was a woman there with one of those huge hounds. She had, like, a big dog. And we were like, how much does that thing weigh? She's like, 135 pounds. And Ramdeen goes, that dog would have to cut 10 pounds to fight Joseph Benavidez. <laughs> you know, they're little tiny dudes. But, man, this guy's explosive. And, you know, you'll talk to some people like, oh, these guys are too small. They couldn't knock me out. They, Joseph Benavidez would knock out most 200-pound men. For sure, like they're powerful, explosive. That was a fantastic performance. And man, like, what is it, 17 and 0 since Bang Ludwig is it's there? It's been an incredible That's run insane, for Team man. Alpha Male. It just shows you how elite they were and they had one tiny hole that has now been fixed. They look unstoppable. Quickly here, Jacare right now, looking like a monster at 185 pounds. I mean, this is a guy, I don't want to see Vitor Belfort and Dan Henderson at this point. I want to see Jacare and Vitor Belfort. I think this is a stupid fight for Vitor at this point. I'm not interested in it. That to me is the fight I want to see at 185 I'll, pounds. I'll, tell you, I'll give you a solution. How about we see Vitor versus versus Dan and then Jacare versus Vitor and then Jacare versus Dan and then Jacare versus Chris Weidman and Jacare versus the rest of the division. This guy's an absolute animal. We can't worry about the title picture. Just give us the best matchups humanly possible. And Jacare is one of those guys that's going to deliver action, whether it's on the ground or standing. His improvements in the striking department have come such a long way since his days in ADCC. This is a guy to watch. If you go back and watch that fight, he was uh, like floating into the left hand of O'Connor on purpose, inviting the left. He was sitting there with a loaded weapon the whole time, inviting the straight left, knowing it was coming. He planned exactly how he was going to knock that guy out. It was super cool. In one word, does Glover have a shot against John Jones or Alexander? Yeah, Gustafson? he's got a shot. A, a right hand lands, and who knows? That nope. could change everything. No shot. I don't believe so either. That's all for us. Now, more fight news now. Extra is coming at you.